now that we have our parts separated out, uh, we're going to start to look at them individually and really think about how those are going to change in order for us to manufacture them. Uh, so our base plate here, I'm going to move this out of the way. Again, I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to say that this is going to be minus 200. That way it's out of the way. I'm also going to take our base plate cover here. I'm going to shift this over. We're going to say that this is minus 150. We're also going to shift this base down here. I'm going to change this to 100. It's a little too far. We're just going to change this to 50 then. Again, I'm keeping these numbers relatively round so that uh, if we need to move things around and test fit them, it's not that hard to move. Uh, we don't have any random, random measurements. And I am also going to hide these two leaves here, which are the inner leaves that we're talking about. And you can see how there are three separate components here. So we're just going to assume that they're going to have molds that are going to be made exactly the same way. And we'll be able to use the parametric modeling feature in order to take this outer mold and reuse it for these other components as well. So I'm just going to hide these. And that way they will be out of the way. So this outer section, this outer leaf here of the cover, I am going to rotate this a little bit so that we get it back to center. I am going to assume that this was rotated some amount and I actually rotated that out of axis. So I'm going to select the part and I'm going to move this control node to this circle and that centers it on the circle. And I can now rotate this 60 degrees and that looks pretty centered right now. So we're just going to leave that there and we'll use that location to help us uh, cut a line of symmetry that we can use to then generate our tooling. So all these parts are now set up to take a look at them. Um, this bottom plate here has these two posts that seem like they're pressed in place. So they are to hold the terminal block that is inside of the lamp. And we're going to ignore these for the time being um, while we're generating our die for the form. And this looks pretty, pretty straightforward. So we'll make a couple parts there and a template that'll help us make that piece. While fabricating this bottom base cover, we're going to assume that it's composed of four pieces that are welded together. We have two pipes on either side, two half pipes. And then we also have a flat face on either side, which is the same. So we're going to assume that those pieces are cut from stock material and then welded together along the seams. And we'll make a fixture to hold those pieces together for welding and also then for shaping. We're going to assume that they're made out of aluminum and that we can shape this aluminum using a router bit um, with a bearing on it. Here we have our arm base and this component here is just made out of wood and bonded directly to the lamp itself. One of the things I'm going to do in order to simplify the fabrication process here is I'm going to remove this hole here from both of these components and I'm just going to change it to have a relief here for that button to fit through without having to make this complicated um, assembly between the base here and the two sheets here. Since this is a bent wood material, it's going to be really hard to, to control that shape. So really simply, I'm going to change the surface a little bit on this base part in order to accommodate not having that hole anymore. So if I look at um, the difference between this surface and this surface by shift clicking, uh, you can see here that I have a three millimeter difference between those two surfaces, which means I need to change this surface by three millimeters. And the beautiful thing here is that I can come in and just reduce that surface. One of the things I wanted to use heavily in this tutorial 
is really looking at the history. And you can see that as we're doing things in the history, uh, it does give us the steps that we took in order to get to a certain place. So that's a really useful tool. And we're going to use that heavily uh, to make our tooling and our dies. The other thing we're going to do to this part is expand this back slot here. And we're going to have a bracket that's going to get installed in this surface. And what's going to happen is as a result of the manufacturing, we're actually going to have a rounded corner here. So uh, in order to simplify that, in order to give us space for that bracket to exist and fit in there nicely, we're just going to expand the surface out a little bit. So I can just drag the surface out and have it match perfectly with the rest of the body. So that simplifies that part altogether. Going back to this inner and outer arm component, uh, we need to get rid of this pocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is very simply just hide this inner arm. And I can come in here and just select these surfaces all the way around and delete this hole. And that's a pretty straightforward thing. I just shift click around and I can just hit the delete button. With that complete, I can now double check that this component still fits correctly against this outer shell. So I can come in here and look at my uh, history tree and this actually just gives me the things that are related to that part and I can suppress that component and I can see that this part goes back into its original location and matches up very nicely. So I am now going to unsuppress this and it should go back to its original location and I'm going to bring back the inner arm and I'm going to hide the outer arm and that way I can take a look at this pocket and try to get rid of the feature there. This is a little bit more complicated. There's a number of different ways of doing it. Uh, one of the easier ways I found is to just extrude this surface across. So I'm going to click the extrude button. I'm going to drag this all the way and close that, that pocket off. And then in this location here, and offset them to nothing. I now have a, a nice flat surface that contains that slot. The other thing I can do is come in here and just delete these surfaces and that closes up the hole there. So now we have to bring this hole back through and what we're going to do first is just select this surface and drag that all the way through. And then I need to open this slot all the way back up again because it is a cable channel. And so I can just drag that surface through and there we go. The next thing I'd like to do is take the hole that we have here and use that to make a plane that is tangent to the outer surface and allows us to then make a bigger relief hole that has the same diameter as this, this hole here. And what that's going to allow us to do is essentially pass the cable through the outer surface into the base. So this is where we need to start making a sketch. And this sketch is going to start off by making a profile sketch that is in the middle of, of this object. And we're going to reuse that plane over and over again. And what I'm going to do is select the two opposing planes of this arm and I can now go to a midpoint plane centered in our object. And we're going to sketch on that. So we're going to click the plane. We're going to click sketch. And we already get a few points here uh, from, you know, what the plane is intersecting. And what we're going to do next is we're actually going to project a, a line based off of the profile of this arm and we can go to project sketches we can click some of the edges that we're going to take a look at and use those to help us plan out where that plane 
ends up perpendicular. So I'm going to click off of that, and we see that our lines get projected back down to our plane. And what I can do here is I can draw a line that is essentially spanning the hole. And then we're going to draw a center point line from the midpoint of that line to this edge over here. And we're going to set a constraint by shift clicking both of those lines together. Oh, we jumped out of the sketch here. I'm going to select these two lines and I'm going to get a perpendicular constraint here. So now that our lines are perpendicular to one another, we're going to add a plane and I can select construction plane perpendicular to edge and we're going to select the edge that we care about and we're going to hit next and then we're going to hit our reference point there we go and now we have a plane that is perpendicular to that line so we're going to be done with that I'm going to select this plane, I'm going to create a new sketch, and then we're going to create a circle and drag this out. Right now, this diameter here is listed as 15, and we're going to change it to 28. And that matches up with our base that we were working on before. And the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to extrude this into all of our components. Um, but I'm going to just make it kind of flush with the bottom of that hole. So let's pick three millimeters. And that looks pretty good right there. The next thing we're going to take a look at is this shade cover here. And we're going to prepare this for vacuum forming. And there's only really one thing that we need to pay attention to, and that's the overall thickness of this part. So this inner ring has uh, a greater thickness than the outer surface here. So what we care about is making sure that this thickness of this part is consistent all the way through. Our minimum dimension here is one millimeter. So if we look here, the distance between those two faces is two millimeters. And we're gonna preserve this top surface here and we need to essentially bring this inner surface up a little bit uh, and try to represent it a little bit like we were going to vacuum form it. So there's a chamfer here. That's the first thing I'm going to remove because that's going to get in our way. And then I'm going to use the extrude function to move this surface up one millimeter. And I'm going to click on the box. We're going to type in one millimeter. And there we go. So now we have a consistent thickness. I want to represent this surface a little bit better than that. And so one of the things that we can do here is to just add a quick fillet. And I can just drag this out. And I'll do both of these together. That way, we have a smooth inner surface as if this was vacuum formed on a mold. So we're going to make an internal mold here and then we're going to use again our router templates to cut that part out entirely and with that all of these parts are now ready to be used to make tools and jigs and fixtures in order to fabricate these pieces individually uh, and so we're going to work through them one at a time